Hello and welcome as Zenith Players presents Hercules Fiorens by Seneca. I am TJ. I am our technical director. All the actors you'll be hearing tonight are volunteering their time and talent from their homes to bring a little bit of entertainment into your homes. We want to thank them all very much for joining us. We would also like to thank our friend, your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare, for hosting this on his pages. You can check out his website at shakespeareapproves.com and his Patreon at patreon.com slash Shakespeare. Find out more about him at the aforementioned website or by visiting his Facebook page, Shakespeare Approves, your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare. We will have links to visit him as well as some of our other performer friends in the comments of this video. As always, we want to acknowledge and thank all of the medical professionals and essential workers who have been working endlessly to keep us all as healthy and safe as possible. If you're interested in more information about our Totally Volunteer organization, check out our website, zenithplayers.com, and feel very free to click on our very attractive donations page. 100% of all donations go towards production costs, which these days consist of the various subscriptions that allow for these readings to happen, but we'll be going towards also our November live production of Bernhardt Hamlet. Uh, if you'd like to read with us in future projects, we're still going to keep these going, just send us an email at casting at zenithplayers.com and we'll get you on board. We are off online readings next week, but we will be back on September 18th to continue the Titanic disaster hearings. For now, though, relax and enjoy Emily Durango as Juno, Steve Anderson as Amphitryon, Matthew Kisher as Theseus, Andrea Atwood as Lycus, Caitlin Jurowitz as Megara, Titania Lovett-Spence and Andrea DeRiso as the Chorus of Thebans, and Shakira Searle as Hercules Furious. The scene is in the princely palace of Hercules at Thebes on the day of the return of the hero from the lower world. The jealous wrath of Juno, working through Eurystheus, has imposed 12 mighty and destructive tasks on Hercules, her hated stepson. But these, even to the last and worst, the bringing of Cerberus to the upper world, he has triumphantly accomplished. Abandoning her plan of crushing him by toils like these, she will turn his hand against himself and so accomplish his destruction. Upon the day of his return from hell, she brings a madness on him. Lo, I, the sister of the Thunderer, for save this name alone, I've nothing more, have left my lord so often false to me, have left in widowhood the realms of heaven and, banished from the sky, have given place unto my hated rivals. Now must earth be my abode, while they in heaven reign. Behold, the bear, far in the frozen north, is set on high to guide the Argive ships. Behold, in southern skies, where days grow long, beneath the warmth of spring, the bull shines bright, who once the Tyrian Europa bore. There gleam the wandering Atlantides, a fearful band for ships and sea alike. And yonder, fierce Orion with his sword, the very gods affrights. His stars as well, the golden Perseus boasts, while Leda's sons with shining banners glitter in the sky. And they, Latona's children, for whose birth the floating land stood form. And not alone have Bacchus and his mother gained the heavens. But that the infamy may be complete, the skies must needs the Cretan maiden's crown endure. <laughs> but these are ancient wrongs, I tell. One wild and baneful land alone is full of shameless mistresses. The Theban land, which all too oft hath me a stepmaid, stepdame made. And though Alcmena scale the heights of heaven and hold my place victorious over me, and though her son his promised star obtain, whose hateful getting cost the whole world a day since Phoebus, bidden to hold his shining car in ocean hid, with tardy light shone forth from eastern seas, still ever in my heart shall hate relentless dwell. Undying wrath my outraged soul shall kindle, and my grief, all hope of truce denying, endless wars shall fiercely wage. <sighs> but what avail my wars? Whatever savage things the hurtful earth, the sea or air produce, terrific shapes, fierce, pestilential, horrible and dire, the power of all is broken and subdued. Alcides towers above and thrives on woe. 
my wrath is his delight, and to his praise he turns my deadly hate. While I, too stern, impose his dreadful tasks, I do but prove his origin, an opportunity for glorious achievement render him. Where Phoebus, with his neighbouring torch, looms the east and western lands of Ethiopia's land, Alcides' dauntless courage is adored, while all the world considers him a god. And now, I have no more monsters to send, unless his toil to do the tasks I bid, than mine to set them. Joyfully he hears my several commands. But what dire tasks the tyrant may conceive can harm that youth impetuous? His very arms, forsooth, are torn from monsters which he feared and slew. With spoils of lion and hydra armed, he walks abroad. Nor are the lands of earth enough for him. Behold, the doors of Dis are burst, and to the upper world he brings the booty taken from the vanquished king. It is not enough that he returns alive. The law that binds the shades is set at naught. Myself, I saw him when he had overcome the king of Hades and escaped the night of that dark underworld. Display to Jove the spoils of Dis. But why does he not lead, oppressed, and overcome the king himself, who gained by lot an equal realm with Jove? And rules he not in conquered Erebus? Why bears he not the sticks? His upward way from deepest hell to earth he is retraced, and all the sacred mysteries of death lie open to the world. Not yet content and proud that he has burst the bars of night, he triumphs over me, and, insolent, he leads through all the cities of the land the gruesome dog of hell. I saw myself the daylight pale at the sight of Cerberus, the sun start in affright. Nay, even I was struck with terror, and I beheld that triple-headed beast in bondage led. I trembled at the thought twas my will. But all too trivial ills do I lament. My fears must be aroused for heaven itself lest he who overcame the lowest depths should scale the very skies and from his sire the scepter snatch away. Nor to the stars will he, like Bacchus, by an easy path attend. Through ruin would he make his way and wish to rule an empty universe. He is inflamed with pride of tested strength, but he has learned by bearing up the heavens, that by his power the heavens can be subdued. Upon his head he bore the universe, nor did his shoulders bend beneath the weight of that stupendous mass. The vault of heaven upon his neck was poised, and steadily he bore the expanse of sky, the shining stars, and even me, down pressing, he endured. He seeks a place among the immortal gods. Then up, arouse thee to destructive wrath, destroy him meditating plans so great. Meet him in single strife with thine own hands asunder rend him. Why, thy mighty hate that thou consign to others to appease. Enough of monsters, let Eurystheus rest, all weary with imposing thy commands. Though thou should open wide Cecilia's vaults and free the titans who has essayed the wrench to, sca to wrench the scepter from the hand of mighty Jove. Through, though the Doric isle, which trembles with affright whenever the heaving giant turns himself, should ease her weight upon the monster's head. Though in the moon another race of beasts should be conceived, yet all of these I know Alcides conquered and will conquer still. Seekest thou his match? There is none save himself. Then set him on war against himself. Let furies from the lowest depths of hell be roused and come to aid. 
their flaming locks aglow with maddening fire, their savage hands, the horrid snaky scourges brandishing. Go now, thou proud one, seek the seats of heaven and scorn the lot of men. And dost thou think, O hero brave, that thou hast fled the sticks and gloomy shades? Here will I show thee hell. Here will I summon up the goddess dire of discord. Deep in the darkness, thick confined, far down below the abode of guilty souls. A cavern huge with a mountain's hole is her dark prison. Her will I call forth and from the deepest realms of dis bring up whatever thou hast escaped. Base crime shall come, impiety that fiercely stains its hand in kindred blood, the shape of error too, and fury ever armed against itself. This, this assistance shall my grief employ. Come then, ye ever faithful slaves of this, begin your task, shake high the blazing torch, and let Megara lend her great dreadful band of sisters Vipress. With deadly hand, let her from off the blazing funeral pyre a burning brand snatch up. Now to your task. Thus seek revenge for violated sticks. Distract his heart with madness. Let his soul more fiercely burn than that hot fire which glows on Etna's forge. But first, that Hercules may be driven to madness smitten through with mighty passion, I must be insane. Why ravest thou not, O Juno? Me, O oh me, ye sisters, first of sanity deprived, that something worthy of a stepdame's wrath I may prepare. Let all my hate be changed to favour. Now <laughs> I pray that he may come to earth again and see his sons unharmed. Now, may he return with all his old time strength. Now, have I found a day when Hercules may help me with his strength that I deplore. Now, let him equally overcome himself and me, and let him, late escaped from death, desire to die. Now, let it profit me that he is born of Jove. I'll stand by him and nicely poise his hand so that his darts may with, with more deadly aim be hurled. I'll guide the madman's arms. And so at last I help Alcides in his wars. The crime complete? Then let his father admit to the heavens those guilty hands. Now must the attack begin. The day is breaking and with saffron light the raising sun dispels the gloom of night. Now scattered with paling light the stars gleam in the sinking west. Now vanquished night collects her fires whose shining band at the day's return the star of morning drives away. High up in the frozen northern sky, the Arcadian bears with, with their sevenfold stars, their course completed, hail the dawn. Now borne along by azure steeds, the sun looks forth on Ota's ridge with those light suffused in clustering grapes in the vineyards of Thebian Bacchus deer. Flush rosy red, the waning moon fades out of sight to return again. Hard toil awakens at whose knock. The doors of men are opened wide and daily cares resumed. The shepherd sends his flock afield and plucks himself the tender grass, still sparkling with the frosty rime. The young bull sports among the fields at liberty. The dams refill 
their empty, utter, supportive kids leap lightly o'er the tender grass in aimless course. On the topmost branch, the Thircadian Philomena sings her strident song, and near her nest of shattering young, she spreads her wings to the morning sun, while all around the throng of birds' united songs announce the day. The daring sailor spreads his sails to the freshening wind as the breezes fill their flapping folds. From wave-worn rocks, the fisher leans and baits anew his cunning hook. He feels his line, a tremble with the struggling fish, or weighs his prize with practised hand and eager eye. Such are the joys of him who lives in tranquil, unworried peace, whose pleasures is hum is a humble house, his own, though small, whose simple hopes are the field, are in the open fields. But worried hopes in the cities dwell, and trembling fears. There are some would haunt the rich man's haughty vestibules, wait at their proud, unfeeling doors, forego their sleep, some heap up wealth, though blessed with boundless wealth and gaze in admiration at their heaps. And yet with all their gold are poor, some strain for the applause of men, the vulgar throng whose fickle will is shifting as the sea and swell with empty pride. The noisy mart still lovers claim, who meanly deal in quarrelsome suits and profit make of wrath and empty words. If you know untroubled peace, the men who heeding time's swift flight hold fast, the years that never will return, while fate permits, live happily, for life runs on with rapid pace and with headlong speed the the year's swift wheel with winged hours is turned. The, the cruel sisters urge their task, nor backward turn the threads of life, but the race of men is hurried on to meet the quick approaching fates, uncertain of their own. Of our own will we haste to cross the Stratigan waves, though Hercules, with heart too brave, before thy time didst see the grieving shades, the fates in pre-established order come, and none may stay when they command. Now may put off the appointed day, the swifting whirling urn of fate contains all mortal men. Let glory then to many lands proclaim some names and shattering fame. Through every city sing their praise and raise them to the stars. Sublime in triumph, let another ride. Me, let my native land conceal within a safe and humble home. Tis unambitious souls who come to hoary-headed age at last. If humble, still the lot is sure of lowly homes. Souls lifted high for those this, for this to great depths must fall. But see, sad Megara comes with flowing hair, her little child closely pressing round with her and with the tardy step of age, the sire of Hercules, Amphitryon. O mighty ruler of Olympus heights, thou judge of all the world, now set at length a limit to my cares and make an end of my disasters. No untroubled day doth dawn for me, but one misfortune's end marks but the starting point of future woes. Fresh foes are ready for my Hercules straight away on his return. Ere he can reach his happy home, another warfare bids he set forth again. No time for rest is given, save while he waits a fresh command. Twas ever thus, from earliest infancy, unfriendly Juno follows on his track. Was e'en his cradle free from her assaults? He conquered monsters ere he learned to know what monsters were. Two crested serpents, huge against him, reared their heads. The dauntless child crawled forth to meet them, and with placid gaze intently fixed upon their fiery eyes, with fearless look he raised their close-coiled folds, 
and crushed their swollen necks with tender hand. And thus he practiced for the Hydra's death. He caught the nimble stag Menelaus, its beauteous head adorned with horns of gold. The lion, terror of Nemean woods, groaned out his life beneath the mighty arms of Hercules. Why should I call to mind the stables dire of that Bistonian herd and the king as food to his own horses given? The rough Menelian boar, which from his lair on Ar Arimanthus' thickly wooded heights filled all the groves of Arcady with dread? Or, or that fell Cretan bull whose terror filled a hundred towns? Among his herds remote, the three-formed shepherd by Tardis's shore was slain, and from the farthest west his herds were driven as booty. Now, Cither now Citheron feeds the cattle once to Achino. Again, when bidden to penetrate the sultry zone of summer's burning sun, those scorched realms which midday parches with his piercing rays, he clove the ponderous mountain barriers and made a pathway for the rushing sea. He next assailed the rich Hesperides and bore therefrom the and bore therefrom the watchful dragon's spoil of golden fruit. Then Lerna's savage beast, an evil creature constantly renewed, did he not overcome by fire at last and teach it how to die? Did he not seek within the clouds the dire Stymphalian birds, whose spreading wings, wings were wont to obscure the day? He was not conquered by the maiden queen who ruled the Amazons and ever kept her couch in virgin state. Nor did his hands, courageous to attempt all glorious deeds, disdain to cleanse the vile Aegean stalls. But what avail these toils? For he alone cannot enjoy the world he saved. And now the world perceives the giver of its peace is absent from its sight. Now prosperous crime is called by virtue's name. Good men obey the guilty, might is counted right, and fear overshadows law. Before my eyes I saw the sons who dared defend their father's throne fall dead beneath the titan's murderous hand. I saw King Creon's self by death o'ercome, the latest son of Cadmus' noble line, and with his head the royal diadem was reft away. Who now could weep enough for Thebes? Proud land and mother of the gods, what master fears she now? She, from whose fields and fertile bosom sprang that band of youth with swords already drawn, whose mighty walls Amphion, son of Jove, once built, its stones compelling by the magic of his lyre. Down to whose citadel was not, down to whose citadel, not once alone, the father of the gods from heaven came. This royal city, which the immortals oft has entertained, which has divinities produced, and heaven forgive the boastful word, perchance will yet produce, is now oppressed beneath a shameful yoke. A royal race of Cadmus, noble state Amphion ruled. Lo, hast thou fallen indeed. Dost thou obey a low-born exile, driven from his land and yet oppressing ours? And now, alas, he who on land and sea doth punish crime, who breaks all cruel rule with righteous hand, far off obeys another and himself endures those ills from which he others saved, and Lycus rules the Thebes of Hercules. But not for long. He soon will come again and punish all the wrongs. He suddenly will to the upper world emerge, a way he'll find or make. Oh, come unharmed, I pray, as victor come at last unto thy home, which now lie in ruins lies. O oh, husband, come with thy strong hand, break through the shades of hell, and if in no way open, if the road is closely barred, then rend the earth and come, and all that lies in keep of dismal night, bring forth with thee, as once through riven hills a passage seeking for a headlong stream thou stoodst, and with thy strength gigantic cleft the veil of Tempe he opened wide, and as then impelled by might of thy resistless breast, 
the mountains fell away from either side, and through the broken masses poured the stream of Thessaly along a channel new. So now to parents, children, native land, a passage burst, and bring away with thee the shapes of death and all that greedy dying, through countless rounds of years has hidden away. Those nations who have drunk forgetfulness drive out before thee, fearful of the light. The spoils are all unworthy of thy fame if thou shouldst bring from Hades only that which was commanded. But too bold my words and thoughtless of my present lot I speak. Oh, when will come at last that day for me when I shall clasp my husband once again and weep no more for his long delayed return, his long forgetfulness of me? To thee, O ruler of the gods, a hundred bulls shall bleed. To thee, thou goddess of the fruits, thy secret rights I'll pay. For thee shall blaze upon a Lucin's shrine the sacred torch in celebration of thy mysteries. Then shall I think my brother's lives restored, my father once again upon his throne. But if some power more potent than, I, than thine own holds thee endurance, we shall come to thee. Return in safety and protect us all or drag us down with thee. This wilt thou do. No God will e'er our broken fortunes mend. O oh, ally of my house, with wifely faith preserving for the great souled Hercules, his couch and children, we of better mind, take heart again, for surely he will come, increased in fame by this, as is his wont by other tasks. What wretched men desire, they readily believe. Hey, what they fear, they think they can never be escaped or born. Fear is prone to see the darker side. Submerged, deep buried, crushed beneath the world, what chance has he to reach the upper realms? The same he had when through the arid plain and sands that billowed like the stormy sea, those twice receding, twice returning gulfs he made his way. When on the dangerous shoals of Surtees he was wrecked, he left his ship a helpless hulk and crossed the sea on foot. Unjust is fortune, rarely does she spare the bravest souls. No one with safety long can brave so frequent perils. He who oft has shunned misfortune meets at last his fate. But see, with threatening looks, fierce Lycus comes, his hateful soul and hateful bearing shown, and bears the stolen scepter in his hand. Lycus. The rich domain of this proud town of Thebes, with all the fertile soil, which Phocis bounds within its winding borders. All the, all the land is Minas' waters. All Sitheron sees from his high top. The narrow isthmus too. Two seas asunder cleaving. All I own. Not by prerogative of long descent, a worthless heir. No noble ancestors, nor family adorned with lofty names have I but splendid valor. He who boasts his noble ancestry exalts a thing which is not his to boast. But power usurped is held with anxious hands. The sword alone can guard it. All thou holdest against the will of citizens, the soul sword must hold for thee. No kingdom built upon a foreign soil is safe for long. One thing alone I see which can our power establish, Megara, by ties of royal marriage bound to me. From her illustrious line and my humble blood shall a richer hue derive. Nor do I think that she will scorn me and refuse my suit. But should she with a blind and stubborn soul refuse my proffered hand, my mind is fixed to give to utter ruin all the house of Hercules. Will such a deed arouse a storm of scandal in the people's hate? The art of ruling chiefly lies in this, the power to bear the people's hate unmoved. Let me make trial then. Occasion smiles, for she herself, in mourning vestments clad, stands by the altars of her guardian gods, 
while near at hand Alcides' father waits. What new outrage does yonder wretch prepare, the pestilent destroyer of our race? O thou who bearest a name illustrious from noble stock, with patient ear a while receive my words. If everlasting hate the hearts of men should feel, if fury dire once in the heart conceived should never cease, if prosperous men must ever fight to rule, and those who fail obey because they must, then never ending wars would nothing leave, and all the fields would be a barren waste. Homes would be burned, and neath their ashes deep, all nations of the earth would be overwhelmed. The victor's prophet is in peace restored, but for the vanquished, tis their direful need. Come, share my throne, let us unite our wills, and as my pledge of faith, receive my hand. Why dost thou in scornful silence wait? And dost thou think that I would touch the hand that is besprinkled with my father's gore and my two brothers' blood? <sighs> Sooner far shall day's last beams go out in what eastern skies and dawn break in the west. Sooner shall peace be made twixt snow and flame and silent join Sicilia's shores with those of Italy. And soon shall Europe's rushing waves lap peacefully upon Ubica's shores. My father and my brothers hast thou slain, my kingdom ruined, home and native land. What still is left? One thing remains to me that's dearer than my father, brother, home and kingdom. Tis my deadly hate of thee. That I must share this with the land at large is grief to me. For in their cause for hate, how small a share have I? Thou swollen with pride, rule on and let thy soul exalt itself. But know that evermore the avenging God pursues the proud of heart. Well do I know the history of Thebes. Why need I tell of matrons who have dared and suffered wrong? Why name the double crime, the mingled names of husband, father, son, the opposing camps of brothers? Why describe the funeral pyres? The haughty mother, child of Tantalus, still sits in stony grief. The morning rock on Phrygian Sipolis still drips with tears. Nay, cat myself in form of serpent still flees through Illyria's realm with crested head and leaves behind his dragging body's tail. Such fates admonish thee. Rule as thou wilt, but may the accustomed doom of Thebes be thine. Come then, have done with this wild talk of thine and learn from Hercules to obey the will of kings. Although by right to victory I wield this scepter, though I reign supreme, without the fear of laws which arms annul, still will I briefly speak in my defense. And did thy father fall in bloody war? Thy brothers too. But arms no limit, no, cannot be checked with ease, nor can the sword once drawn restrain its wrath. War will have blood. But, you will say, he fought to save his state while I was prompted by the lust of power. Still, we should look not at the cause of war, but at its outcome. Now let memory of all the former wrongs pass from thy heart. When the victor lays aside his arms, tis meet the vanquished should abandon hatred too. I ask thee not upon thy bended knees to acknowledge me as king, for it is well that thou shouldst meet thy ruin dauntlessly. Lo, thou art worthy of a royal mate. Be then my wife and not my enemy. Cold horror creeps through my, throughout my lifeless limbs. What shameful proposition do I hear? I did not shrink, shrink when loud alarm of war rang round our city's walls, and all my woes I've bravely borne. But marriage, and with him! <laughs> now do I think myself indeed a slave, low down my tender frame with heavy chains, be lingering death by long starvation sought. Still shall no power o'ercome my wifely fate. 
they shall be thine, our cities, to the death. What spirits does a buried husband bring? He went below that he might reach the heavens. The boundless weight of earth. No weight. Him. No weight of earth can overwhelm the man who bore the heavens up. Thou shalt be forced. He can be forced, he who knows not how to die. Tell me what gift I could bestow more rich than royal wedlock. Grant thy death or mine. Then die thou fool. Tis thus I'll meet my lord. Is that slave more to thee than I, a king? How many kings has that slave given to death? Why does he serve a king and bear the yoke? Remove hard tasks and where would the valor be? To conquer monsters callest thou valor, then. Tis valor to subdue what all men fear. The shades of Hades hold that boaster fast. No easy way leads from the earth to heaven. Who is his father that he hopes for heaven? Unhappy wife of mighty Hercules, be silent now, for tis my part to tell outside his parentage. After his deeds, so many, so great, after the world from rising unto setting of the sun has been subdued, so many monsters tamed. After the giant's impious blood was spilled in Phlegra's vale, and gods were reinforced, what need we yet to prove his parentage? Do we make false pretense of Jupiter? Then Juno's hate believe. Why blaspheme Jove? The race of mortals cannot mate with gods. Such is the origin of many gods. But were they slaves before their heaven was gained? The Delian and Fairy kept the flocks. But he did not in exile roam the world. His mother bore him in a roaming land, herself a fugitive. Did Phoebus fear wild beasts and monsters? Yes, in dragon's blood his earliest shafts were stained. Thou knowest not what heavy ills the young Alcides bore. Bacchus, by a thunderbolt, was ripped from out his mother's womb, and yet he stood in after time beside the thunderer, his sire. Hey, Jove himself, who rules the stars and drives the clouds, did he not lie concealed in helpless infancy in Ida's cave? A heavy price must so high lineage pay. Suffering is the birthright of a god. Whoever is wretched, thou wouldst mortal know. Whoever is brave, thou wouldst not wretched call. But is he brave? From whose broad shoulders fell the lion's skin and club, that they might be a maiden's plaything? Who himself shone bright in Tyrian vestments? Should we call him brave, whose bristling locks were wet with fragrant nard? whose famous hands in woman's wise essayed to play the timbre, and on whose frowning brow with Phrygian turban shamelessly was worn. Youthful Bacchus did not blush to wear his locks in flowing ringlets, in his hand the thirstest light to, to brandish, as he walked with steps unsteady, clad in trailing robes bright with barbaric gold. His virtue's right in foolishness to ease the strain of toil. T'was for this cause the house of Eurydice was overthrown, and troops of maidens slain like helpless sheep. No Juno ordered this, nor yet Eurystheus, these his works alone. Thou knowest not all his deeds. It was his work that Eryx fell by his own gauntlet slain, that in his death Antaeus too was joined. That those foul altars dripping with the blood of hapless strangers drank the blood at last of murderous Bucyrus. T'was his work that sickness, proof against the sword, was slain, though still unwounded. By his hand alone the threefold Garion fell. And thou shalt be as one of these, though they ne'er basely sin against the rites of marriage. What to Jove is lawful is my kingly right as well. A wife thou gavest to him, now for thy king that shalt thou a mate provide. 
Now Megara from thine example shall the lesson learn, not new, that wives may yield to better men when husbands give consent. But if self-willed she shall refuse to take me for her lord, I'll force her will to bear me noble seat. The shades of Creon and household gods of Lab Labdacus, ye impious nuptial fires of Oedipus, your wanted fortune give to this our union. O oh, ye savage wives of King Egyptus' sons, be present now with blood-stained hands. Your count is incomplete. I gladly will that impious number fill. Since thou dost stubbornly refuse my suit and strivest to fright the king, thou shalt thou now feel the strength of royal power. Cling as thou mayest to altar horns. No god can save thee now from me. Not though the earth itself be rent and Hercules victorious come again unto the upper world. Heap high the logs and let the sacred temple blazing fall upon its suppliants. Now let the wife and all her brood upon the funeral pyre be burned to ashes in the kindling flames. This boon Alcides' father asks of thee, which fits me well that I be first to die. Who bids all men meet punishment with death knows not the ruler's art. Seek varied pains, forbid the wretch to die, the happy slay. Now, while the pyre is growing for the flames, I'll pay my vows unto the ocean's god. Oh, god of gods, the ruler of the skies, whose hurtling bolts make mortals quake with fear. Check thou the impious hand of this dire king. <laughs> Why do I vainly importune the gods? Where'er thou art, hear thou an answer, son. Why this sudden rocking of the shrine? Why groans the earth? Or in her lowest hold a crashing deep resounds? Prayer is heard. It is, it is the step of Hercules. O oh, fortune, envious of a brave, unjustly are thy prizes given. Behold, Eurytus reigns at ease, while our Alcman's noble son, with hands which could the heavens uplift, must endless wars with monsters rage, must sever the hydra's teeming necks and from the cheated sisters bear the apples when the dragon huge the guardian of the golden fruit had given to sleep this watchful eyes to wandering homes to zakethia where tribes in their ancestral seats as strangers dwell he made his way he trod the frozen ocean's crust a still sea hemmed by silent shores. There no waves beat on the rigid plains, and where but now full swelling sails had sped their barks, a path is worn by the long-haired Samarite. There the waters change with the changing year, now ships, now horses bearing up. From the queen who rules over virgin tribes, with golden girdles on their loins, he took her body's noble spoil, her shield and her snowy bosom's guard. On bended knee, she acknowledged him victor, with what hope driven the, to the depths of hell, bold to tread in retraceable ways, didst thou behold the dusky realms, O perspine of Sicily. There, notice and favious lash, no seas to rage with swelling floods, there do no frightened vessels find help from the twin Fyandra. Those waters lie in stagnant pools, and blacken when, with greedy teeth, pale death bears off uncounted tribes. Unto the shades one oarsman's grim bears all across their gloomy depths. Oh, that the laws of cruel Styx! 
thou mightest annual and the distaff break, where lessons of the fates. And lo, thou canst unveil, for he who rules o'er many nations once with thee, his deadly hands in battle joined, when thou didst wage against Nestor's land a mighty war. A three-pronged spear he bore, but soon by but a wound overcome he fled. He feared to die, though Lord of Death burst with thy hands the bonds of fate. To those sad souls in hell, let in the light of day and to the upper world reveal an easy path. Once, by his songs and suppliant prayers, did Orpheus bend the stubborn lords of hell. When he, he lost his eyes, Eurydice would seek. That art which drew the forest trees, which held the birds and rocks enthralled, which stopped the river's headlong race, and tamed the hearts of savage beasts, soothed with its strains near heard before those dark sums realms and clear and fine resounded through the silent land. Eurydice and the Thracian dames, bewildered Eurydice, the gods, who never had wept before, and they who with forbidden awful brows in judgment sit and hear the crimes long since committed unconfessed, they sapped and wept Eurydice until the Lord of Death exclaimed, we grant thy prayer away to earth, but on this sole condition go. Do thou behind my, thy husband fare, and look thou not upon thy wife, until the light of day thou see, and Spartan Tenernius appear. Love hates delay, nor suffers it. He hastened to behold his wife. And she again was lost to him. So then the fortress that could yield to song, be sure that fortress shall to strength belong. Enter Hercules, just returned from the lower world, accompanied by Theseus. Oh, kindly lord of light, heaven's ornament, who circlest all the spaces of the sky with thy flame-bearing calm, and thy bright head dost lift to glad a new awakened earth. Thy pardon, no Apollo, do I crave, if aught unlawful thou dost see in me. For by another's will have I revealed the hidden things of earth. Thou, Lord of heaven, and sire behind thy flaming thunderbolt, conceal thy face. And thou who rulest the seas by second lot, seek thou their lowest depths. Whoever from on high beholds the earth, and would not by strange sights be vision stained to heaven look, and so these portents shun. Two only may behold this horrid sight, the one who brought, and she who ordered it. To work my punishment and fated toils to earth was not enough. Through Juno's hate have I seen regions unapproachable, unknown to Phoebus' rays. Yea, I have seen those gloomy spaces which the nether pole hath yielded to the dusky Jove's domain. And had the regions of the final lot been pleasing, there could I myself have reigned. That seething chaos of eternal night, and what is worse than night, the gloomy gods and fates I conquered, and in scorn of death I have come back again. What else remains? I've seen and shown the lower world to men. If aught beyond is left to do, command. Why dost thou for so long allow these hands, O Juno, to remain in idleness? What conquest still dost thou command? But why do soldiers hold the temple walls in siege? and fear of arms beset their sacred doors. Now, oh, do I have fervent hopes to see if my sight? Or is this he, the tamer of the world, the pride of Greece, from that sad, silent land returned? Is this my son, 
my aged limbs give way through utter joy. O oh, son of Thebes, the shore, though long delayed preserver thou, do I hold thee sent to earth again? Or does some empty shadow mock my joy? And art thou here, here, here indeed? I recognize thy arms and soldiers and the mighty club within thy hands renowned. O oh, father, whence these marks of grief? And why do I behold my wife in dusky morning garments clad? My children garbed in these vile signs of woe? What fell disaster hath o'erwhelmed my house? My father-in-law is slain, his kingdom gone. Lycus hath usurped it. Now she seeks thy children, father, wife, to bring to death. Ungrateful land, did no one come to aid the home of Hercules? Did all the world, defended by my arm, look on this deed and suffer it? But why waste time in grief? My enemy must die. Oh, Hercules, let not thy mighty courage bear this stain, and such a foe as Lycus be thy last. I go myself to drink his hateful blood. My Theseus, stay thou here, lest violence from some new source arrive. This war is mine. Let thy embraces wait a while, my sire, and thine, my wife. Let Lycus first announce to this that I have safe returned to the earth. Now let thy face give o'er this grief, my queen, and thou, O father, check thy falling tears. Since this thy son is safe returned to thee. If I know Hercules for Creon's death, this Lycus soon shall pay the penalty. Shall pay is slow. He pays, nay more, has paid. Now oh, may some favor in God our prayers fulfill and help us in our need. O oh, trusty friend of our great son, his deeds in order tell. How long the way that leads to the sorrowing shades, how, how bore the dog of hell his heavy chains? Oh, thou bidst me call to memory such deeds, as even in safety makes me tremble still. <sighs> For I can scarce believe that even yet I breathe the vital air. My eyes clear sight is blinded, and by that thick darkness dimmed can scarce endure the unaccustomed light. Conquer thou the fear that still remains deep in thy heart, and do not rob thyself of the best fruit of toil. For what was hard to bear becomes most sweet in memory. Go on, tell us all thy sufferings. O God of heaven, and thou wast holdest sway in that deep, all-embracing realm of death. And though whose mother sought thee but in vain, through all the world, your powers I supplicate, that I may speak with boldness of the things concealed and buried in the hold of earth. The Spartan land lives high, a famous cliff, where Tyrnaris, just up upon the sea, dense wooded. Here the realm of hated disopes wide its mouth, the high cliff spreads apart, and in a mighty cavern yawns a pit with jaws portentous huge, precipitous, and for all nations ample passage gives. The way begins, not dark with heavy shades. A watery gleam of daylight follows in, and doubtful light, as of the sun eclipsed, falls there and mocks the eye. Such light the day, while mingled still with night, at early dawn or in its warning hour, waning hour, is wont to give. The way then broadens into space vast and empty, where human race entire might plunge and perish. Tis no labor here to travel, for the road itself draws down. As often whirlpools suck unwilling ships, so does the air. Downstreaming urges us on in hungry chaos. Here the clutching shades permit no backward step. Deep in the abyss with peaceful shallows, gentle lathe 
glides, and by its draughts removes all mortal care, and that no background way may be allowed. With many folds it wraps the stream of death, just as the wandering meander sports with waves uncertain, now upon itself retreats, now halts in hesitation slow, whether it shall its fountain seek again or journey to the sea. Here lies the marsh of sluggish, vile cocytus. Here, behold, the vulture there, the doleful owl laments, and through the air the fearsome screech owl sends its sad, foreboding cry. There stands the yew, its black leaves shuddering on the gloomy boughs, and neath its shelter hover sluggish sleep and mournful famine with her wasting jaws. And shame, at last her guilty face concealed. Here quaking fear and murder, desperate grief, black mourning, tottering disease, and war with weapons girded on, lie hid. And last comes feeble age upon his staff upheld. Are there no fruitful fields of corn or wine? Not so. No joyful fields with vendor shrine, no ripening grain waves gently in the breeze. No stately trees bear ample laden bows, but sterile wastes defile those lonely depths, and in eternal sloth the foul earth lies. Here lie the lonesome remnants of the world. The air hangs motionless and thick night broods upon a sluggish, horse-stricken land. The place of death is worse than death itself. Uh, what of him who rules those dusky realms? Where sits he as he rules his shadowy folk? There's a place in an obscure recess of Tartarus, which, with its heavy shades, dense vapor shrouds. Hence, from a single source, two different rivers flow. With silent stream, one bears along the sacred Stygian waves, on which the gods take oath. With mighty roar, the other fiercely rolls the rock along within its flood, the raging Achaeon. Achaeon, which may not be recrossed. Set opposite by these two streams encircled stands the hall of royal Dis, and by a shading grove the mighty house is hid. A spacious cave of overhanging rock, the threshold forms this in the path of souls. Here is the door of Pluto's realm, and round about three spreads the plain wherein the frowning monarch sits and new-come souls reviews. Of lowering brow and awful majesty the god appears. Yet in his face his brother's likeness bears, and proves his noble birth. Jove's face is his, but thundering Jove's. And of that savage realm the master's self makes up the largest part, where every fearful thing holds him in fear. And is the story true that down below stern justice is at last administered? And guilty souls who have their crimes forgot at last atone for sin? Who is he then who searches out the truth and, and justice gives? There is not one inquisitor alone who sits in judgment of the lofty se seat and tries the trembling culprits in that hall sit Cretan, Minas, Ramadhamathas too, and Asius. Each of his sins of earth must suffer here. The crimes returns to him who did it, and the guilty soul is crushed by its own presidents. There, deep immured in prison, bloody leaders have I seen, and bleeding backs of heartless tyrants scrounged by base plebeian hands, who, mild, who mildly reigns, and though the Lord of life restrains his hands, who mercifully rules a bloodless realm and spares the lives of men, he shall enjoy the long years of happy life, and at the end attain to heaven, 
or to those regions blessed of the Elysian fields, himself a judge. Refrain from human blood, all ye who rule. Your sins with heavier judgment shall be judged. Does any certain place enclose the, the lost? And, and do, as rumor says, the impious, sharp punishments in endless chains endure. On swifty flying wheels, Ixion turns, and on the neck of Sisyphus, a stone weighs heavily. There stands in middle stream, with throat thirst parched, the poor old man, and seeks to catch the cooling waves which wash his chin. He oft deceived hopes now at last to drink, as often fails the water at his lips. So also do the fruits his hunger fail. There, Titius, the eternal banquets gives unto the greedy vulture, and in vain do Danius' daughters bear their brimming urns. There wander, raging still, the caimids and greedy birds still fright old Phineas. No. Tell the noble struggle of my son. Does he bring back his uncle's willing gift? Or does he leave the dog as spoil of war? A gloomy cliff o'erhangs the sluggish souls, whose waves are dead and waters motionless. This stream is guarded by a grim old man of squadlid garb and aspect hideous, who carries o'er the pool the quaking shades, his long beard hangs unkept, his shapeless robe is knotted into place, his fierce eyes gleam from sunken cheeks, and he, as ferryman with his long pole, propels his bark across. He now, his empty boat, onto the shore, was turning to receive the waiting souls, when Hercules requested to be borne across the stream. The throng of shades give way, but fiercely cra Crayon cries, um, Sharon cries, Whither so bold does thou haste on? Stay there thy hurrying steps. Alcmena's son, who would no delay endure, but with the pole itself the boatman tamed and climbed aboard the boat. The roomy craft for nations ample groaned beneath his weight, and as he sat the heavy-weighted skiff with rocking sides drank in the leith stream. Then quaked the conquered monsters at the sight. <laughs> the centaurs, fierce and wild, the lep lepite, inflamed to strife by copious draughts of wine, and seeking out the farthest pools of sticks, the beast of Lerna hid his fertile heads. <laughs> Soon there appeared the home of greedy Dis, who the fierce Stygian dog frights the shades, who, tossing back and forth his triple heads with mighty baying, watchers over the realm around his head with damn corruption foul with what writhe deadly serpents and his shaggy mane with vipers bristles with while a twisting snake from his long hissing tail his wrath and forms are both alike terrific when he heard the sound of coming feet, straightway he raised, his hackles bristling with darting snakes, and with erected ears caught at the sound, for even noiseless spirits can he hear. <laughs> when Jove's son near came with his cave, the dog stood hesitant, and nameless fear each of the others felt. The suddenly the silence shudders with his baying deep and threatening sakes along his shoulders hissed. The clamor of his dreadful voice sent forth three-throated, even happy shades dismayed. Then did the hero from his left arm loose the lion's skin with his head and grinning jaws, and neath his mighty shield opposed the dog. Then in his right all-conquering, he raised his mighty club, and with a rain of blows, now here, now here, he drove the frightened beast. <laughs> the conquer dog at last gave o'er his threats, and spent with fighting, lowered all his heads, and left the entr entr entrance free. Then did the king and queen of hell sit trembling on their thrones, and bade the dogs be led away. Me too did dis at Hercules' request release, a royal gift. 
Then with his soothing hand, Alcides stroked the monster's massive necks and bound him with an adamantine chain. The watchful guardian of the dusky world forgot his wanted fierce fierceness, and his ears drooped timidly. He let himself be led, confessed his masters, and with muzzle low, submissively he went, his snaky tail beating his sides the while. But when he came to the Tarnarius, and his eyes there smote the gleam of unknown light, though strongly bound, his courage he regained, and madly shook his mighty chains. Even his conqueror was backward born, and forced to yield his stand. Then even my aid did the hero seek, and with untied strength we dragged the dog, still mad with rage, and attempting fruitless war into the upper world. But when he saw the gleaming spaces of the shining sky, <laughs> the light of day, the thick darkness blinded him. He turned his gaze to earth and closed his eyes, expelled the hated light, looked backward, sought with all his necks the sheltering earth, and last he hid his head within Alcides' shade. But see, a mighty throng with shouts of joy come yonder. Warning, wearing laurels on their brows, who chant the well-earned praise of Hercules. Euphorius, brought untimely forth, had bidden Hercules to pierce the depths of earth. This task alone, of all his labours, yet remained. He robbed the dusky sky, king of hell. He dared to enter the dark way which to distant maidens leads, dismal with gloomy forest sets, yet crowded with thronging souls. As when the eager people haste throughout the city to behold the play in some new theatre, as when they crowd the Paisin fields, when the fifth summer brings again the Elenian thunderer's sacred games, as when the lengthening nights return and the balanced scales the sun's bright car detain to gentle sleep inclined the people throng the mysteries of Ceres while the Attic priests lead through the fields with hurried steps the worshippers such thronging hordes are driven through silent plains a part goes slow with steps of age Sadly and stated with the, ye with the years, some in the earlier flush of life advance with the sprightly step of youth. Young maids not yet in wedlock joined, and boys with flowing ringlet ringlets, babes, who have not yet learned to repeat their mother's name. To these alone tis given to dispel the night, with tortures and their fears rel relieve. The rest in utter darkness fair and sadness. So our spirits mourn when each one grieving o'er his fate feels crushed in darkness neath the weight of all the world. There chaos reigns, repulsive glooms, the hateful dark of night, the empty veil of clouds, the weary inactivity of that still empty universe. Oh, may the time far distant be when old age bears us to that land. None come too late and near can he who once has come return again. What need to hasten cruel fate? For all the wandering tribes of earth shall surely seek the lands of shades and on the still Koyotkas spread their sails all things the sun beholds, in rising and in setting grow, but to decay. Then spare, O death, those who are doomed to come to thee. Life is but practicing for death. Though thou be slow in coming still, we hasten ourselves. The hour which gave us life begins our death. The joyful day of Thebes is here. Now at the altar sacrifice, and let the choicest victims fall. Ye maids and men in mingle bands begin that the stately choral dance, and let the cattle of the fields 
put off their yokes and be glad today. For by the hands of Hercules has peace from east to west be won. And in that land where the sun rides high in middle heaven and shadows fail. Whatever region her fierce slaves in her long reach has been overcome by great assiduous toils, born now across the shoals of Tartarus, with hell subdued, he comes again. No room is left for fear, for what beyond the world of death remains. And now ye priests adorn your bristling hair with popular which Elysides loves to wear. Enter Hercules, fresh from the slaying of Lycus, intending to offer sacrifices to the gods. By my avenging hand lies Lycus slain, and all who in his life the tyrant claimed as comrades, now by death are comrades still in punishment. Now will I offerings pay unto my father and the gods of heaven for victory and heap the altars high with bleeding victims to their kindness due. Thee, thee, O oh friend and helper in my toils, O oh warlike palace, unto thee I pray, upon whose left the petrifying shield makes direful threats. And be thou here, I pray, thou tamer of Lycurgus, who did cross the ruddy sea, who in thy hand dost bear the thyrsus, Ivy wreathed, and the sweet twin gods Apollo and Diana hear my prayer. Her hand the bow adorns, but his the lyre. Ye too I worship, all ye brothers mine who dwell in heaven, but not my stepdame sons. And do ye hither drive my richest flocks, whatever fragrant spices India bears, and far Arabia to the altars bring and let the savoury smoke of sacrifice to heaven ascend. Now let us crown our locks with wreaths of poplar, but the olive leaves, thy nation's symbol, should adorn thy head, O Theseus. Now in prayer we lift our hands to Jove the Thunderer. Do thou protect the founders of our state, the wooded caves of savage Zethus, Dirthi's famous fount, and the Tyrian lairs of our pilgrim king. Now throw the fragrant incense on the flames. O oh, son, thy, thy hands all dripping with the blood of thy slain foe, the, the first shouldst purify. <sighs> Would that I his hateful blood I might pour out unto the gods, for no libation poured could stain the altars more acceptably. No ampler, richer victim could be paid to mighty Jones than this unrighteous king. Beseech thy father that he end thy tasks. Pray that at last he gives her cease of toil and to the weary rest. I shall myself frame prayers more worthy Jupiter and me. May heaven, earth, and air their order keep, and the everlasting stars wheel on their way unchanged. May peace profound brood o'er the world. May iron be used for harmless toil alone, and deadly weapons vanish from the earth. May no unbridled tempest lash the sea. May angry Jove send forth no lightning bolts, and may no river fed by winter's snows or flow the troubled fields. May venom fail, and may no noxious herb its fruitage bear. May cruel and fierce tyrants rule no more. If the pregnant earth still foster any cry, let her make haste to bring it to the light. And if she still another monster bear, let it be mine to meet. But what is this? The day's bright noon by is by dark shadows dimmed, and that the sky be cloudless, Phoebus fares with face obscured. Who puts the day to flight and drives it back to seek the dawn again? Whence rears unearned heard of night its gloomy head? Why do so many stars the heavens fill in daylight hours? See, with a lion fierce, my earliest labor glitters in the sky, inflamed with wrath and threatens with his fangs. 
now surely will he some bright star devour with gaping jaws and menacing he stands he breathes out fire and on his flaming neck his mane he tosses Soon will he all leap with one huge bound the fruitful autumn stars and those which frozen winter brings to view and slay with savage lunge the vernal bull. What sudden ill is this? Why dost thou turn now here, now there, thy burning eyes? Why dost thou see so falsely in the heavens? Now. Is the whole round earth at last subdued? The swollen seas give place, and in the realms infernal have our toils heroic known. The heavens alone remain untried, a task worth well the struggles of a Hercules. Now shall I soar aloft to those far heights and seek the heavenly spaces. For a star has Jupiter, my father, promised me. What if he should he what if he should refuse? Nay, but the earth no longer can Alcides hold, and now returns him to the heavens whence he came. Behold, the whole assembly of the gods invite me to thy myth, their midst, and open wide the doors of heaven. With one dissenting voice. And wilt thou not receive me into heaven? Wilt not unbar the gates? Wouldst have me rend the portals of the stubborn sky away? And dost thou doubt my power? Nay, Saturn's chains will I unbind and loose my grandsire's might against his empire's son's unbridled sway. I'll stir the Titans up to war again and lead them on. Great rocks and trees I'll bring, and with my strong right hand I'll snatch and hurl the ridges where the centaurs have their home. Two mountains, one on other, will I pile and so construct a highway to the skies. Then shall old Chiron see Mount Ossa placed upon his pillion. And if to heaven Olympus reach not, third in order sent, I'll hurl it there. Such thought be far from thee. Check this mad impulse of a heart insane, though great. But what is this? With dire intent the giants are in arms. Great Titius has fled the shades, and towering aloft with torn and empty breast has almost gained the heavens. Cithrian is there and to it totters to his base. Helene trembles, Tempe faints in fear. One has not been snatched away, and one, Mount Ata. Mimas rages horribly. Now comes Erinus with her flaming torch and shakes her hissing scourge. My face she seeks, nearer and nearer with illumined brands on funeral pyres enkindled. There I see Tysiphone with snake encircled head. With brandished torch she guards the gate of hell, now that their watchdog has been stolen away. But see where lurk the children of the king, the impious spawn of Lycus whom I hate. To your detested sire I'll send you now. Let darting arrows from my bowstring fly. Such errands fit my noble weapons well. What will he do in his blind passion's rage? Now he has bent his mighty bow, and now his quiver loosed. <laughs> is he dark as sped? Straight through the neck it flies, leaves the wound. The rest will I hunt out. Yea, all that lurk within this city's walls without delay. A greater war against Mycenae waits than by my hands those Cyclopean walls may be overthrown. And for the royal hall, its high walls shattered, noble roof in form, doors burst, may be to utter ruin brought, and all its royal secrets be revealed. Ah, 
Here I see another wicked son of that most wicked sire. No, the child, his coaxing hand stretched out to clasp the knees of his mad father, begs with piteous tones. Cry once unspeakable, pathetic, grim, for by his pleading hand the child is caught and madly whirled again and yet again set headlong through the air. Sickening sound. With his scattered brains, the roof is wet. But wretched Megara, her little son protecting in her arms, flees madly forth. Oh, thou shouldst hide thee in the thunderer's arm. This hand of mine will seek and snatch thee forth. Oh, with a wretched woman dost thou flee. What flight, what hiding places dost thou seek? No place is safe from angry Hercules. Embrace his knees the rather, and with prayer attempt to soothe his wrath. Well, husband, spare. Thy Megara behold and recognize this son of thine thy face and manner bears. See how he stretches out his hands to thee. At last I have thee, stepdame, in my power. Come thou with me and pay full penalty for all my wrongs. Free thy poor troubled lord from his base yoke. But ere the mother dies, this little monster must be put to death. What wouldst thou, madman, shed thine infant's blood? The child, in terror of his father's face, died where he felt the blow. It was fear that snatched his spirit forth. Now, against his trembling wife, his mighty club is raised. Her bones are crushed. Her head is stricken from the mangled trunk and may no more be seen. Oh, stubborn age, too long enduring, canst thou hide this sight? If my grief is irksome, death is near. Impale me on thy darts, a club of thine with blood of monsters smeared, raised to my death. Come, slay me, who am falsely called thy sire. And so remove this blot upon thy name that I no longer may thy fame obscure. Why shouldst thou wantonly provoke thy death, old man? Why this mad haste to die? Away and hide from this one crime spare, Hercules. Tis well. The household of the shameless king is utterly destroyed. To thee, O oh, wife of mighty Jove, this promised sacrifice have I performed. My vows I've gladly paid, and other victims shall thine Argos give. That's not yet enough atonement made, O oh son. Complete the sacrifice. Behold, a victim at the altar stands and waits with willing neck in thy hand. I offer him my life, and eagerly I seek to die. Slay me. What is this? His eyes, keen glance, cannot maintain its gaze. The grief dims his sight. Do I see the hands of Hercules a tremble? Now oh, his eyelids fall in sleep. His head sinks down upon his weary breast. His knees give way. And down upon the earth, his whole great body falls, as when some ash is felled in forest plains, or when some cliff falls down and makes a harbour in the sea. Dost thou yet live, or hast thy furious rage, which sent thy friends to death, slain thee as well? In slumbers, his measured breathing proves, let him have time for rest. That heavy sleep may break his madness force, and so relieve his troubled heart. He, slaves, his, his arms remove, lest waking again his madness proof.
Let heaven and heaven's creator mourn, the fertile earth, the wandering wave upon the restless sea. And thou who over lands and oceans plains dost shed thy light, whose beauteous face drives night away. O oh, glowing sun, grieve more than all, for equally thy risings had a season seen. And eke thy settings, both thy homes, where now unto him his spirits lose, from monstrous madness lose him, ye who rule above his mind restored to sanity again. And thou, O sleep subduer of our ills, the spirits rest, thou better part of human life, swift winged one. Astrea's child of cruel death, the sluggish brother, mix and false, with true prescient of future things, but often nest of misery. O sire of all things, gate of life, day's respite and the comrade true of night, who comest impartially to king and slaves, with gentle hand the wearied spirit comforting. Thou who dost force the race of men, who quail at mortal doom to gain a foretaste of sleep of death, subdue and overwhelm him quite, with heavy stupor, let his limbs unconquered to throw, be held fast bound in change of deepest sleep, take not the spell from his fierce heart. Until his former mind return to its accustomed course, but see, prone on the ground he lies, his savage dreams in his fierce heart still hold their sway. Not yet, alas, is his dire madness overcome, accustomed to recline his head upon his heavy club, see now. He feels about with empty hand to find the ponderous trunk, his arms with fruitless motion tossed, not yet has all the fever from him, from his veins. Been driven out, but rages on, as waves by mighty tempest vexed, tossed wildly on and swell with rage, although the winds have ceased to blow. O oh, calm this tempest in his soul, let piety and manly strength return, or rather let his mind be still by mad impulses stirred, and his blind error go the way it has begun. For madness now alone can make him innocent. To have the hands unstained by guilt is best, but next to this is sin done in unconsciousness. Now let thy breast resound with blows, and let those arms which once have borne the heavens up by smitten now, by the victorious hands, thy cries be heard throughout the realms of air, by her who rules the world of night, and Cerberus crouching in his cave, his neck still burdened with thy chains. Let chaos with the dolorous sound re-echo, and the widespread waves of ocean and the air above, which had thy darts in better use beheld. Thy breast with ills beset, so mighty must with no light blow be smitten. With one great sound of grief, let heaven, sea, and hell be filled. And now, brave shaft above his neck, so long suspended, errament, and weapon too, thou quiver huge, smite heavenly his savage back. Thou sturdy club of oak, come beat his mighty shoulders and oppress his breast and thy hard knotted stock. Let all his we weapons worthily of great grief lament with him. But you, who in your father's praise can never shall share, who never hear from kings, have taken deadly recompense, who never in the Argive games have learned to bend your youthful limbs in wrestling and in boxing strong to strive, who have but dared as yet to poise the slender Scythian dart with steady hand, and pierce the stag who safety seeks in flight, but not the lion fierce with tawny mane. Go to your Stygian refuge, go. 
ye guiltless shades, who on life's verge have you, by your father's mad assault been overwhelmed, poor children, born of, a, of an ill-omened, luckless race, far on along your father's foilsome path, to where the gloomy monarchs sit in wrath. What place is this? What quarter of the world? Where am I? Neath the rising sun, nor where the frozen bear wheels slowly overhead. Or in that farthest land whose shores are washed by the Hesperian sea. What air is this I breathe? What soil supports my weary frame? For surely I have come again to earth. Whence came those bloody corpses in my house? Do I behold them? Who oh, not even yet have those infernal visions left my mind? Even on earth, the ghostly shapes of death shall flit before mine eyes. I speak with shame. I am afraid some great calamity, some hidden ill my prescient soul forebodes. Where is my father? Where my faithful wife, proud of that troop of children at her side? Why does my left side miss the lion's skin, my shield in danger and my couch in sleep? Where is my bow, my darts? Who, while I live, has dared remove my arms? Who so great spoils has gained? Who then so bold as not to fear the very slumber of a Hercules? would please me well to see my victor. Well, arise, thou victor, whom my sire begot, a later wonder, leaving heaven behind, at whose begetting longer than at mine, the night stood waiting. Oh, what sight is this? My sons lie murdered, weltering in their blood. My wife is slain. What Lycus rules the land? Who could have dared to do such things in Thebes? And Hercules returned. Whoever dwells along his main stream, in Attic plains, or in the land Dardanian Pelops rules, by two seas left, come to my aid and tell the name of him who, this mur who has this murder done. If not, my wrath shall turn against you all, for he's my foe who shows me not my foe. Why dost thou hide, Alcides Vanquisher? I care not whether thou dost vengeance seek for those wild horses of the Thracian king, or Geryon's flock, or Libya's vanquished lords. I do not shun the fight. See. Here I stand defenseless, even though with my own arms thou comest against me, Armelus. But why do Theseus and my father shun my glance? Why do they turn away? Postpone your tears and tell me who has given my loved ones all to death. What? Father, art thou silent still? Then do tell me, Theseus, faithful friend. Each turns away in silence, and his face as if in shame conceals, while down his cheeks the tears flow stealthily. In so great ills, what cause for shame can be? Is this the work of him who ruthlessly at Argos rules? Has dying like us hostile soldiery with such disaster overwhelmed our house? Oh, Father, by the praises of my deeds, by thine own name, which ever was to me propitious, tell, I pray thee, who hath overthrown mine house? Whose prey am I? Let ills like these in silence pass away. And I be unavenged? But vengeance hurts. 
Who hath been active ever borne such wrongs? Who fear greater wrongs? Than these my wrongs can any greater, heavier be feared. Uh, the part thou knowest of thy woes is least. Oh, have pity. See, I stretch my suppliant hands. But what is this? He will not touch my hands. In these must be the sin. But whence this blood? Why is that shaft? Once dipped in Hydra's gall, now wet with infant gore. They are mine own. Though these arrows that I see, the guilty hand I need no longer seek. For who but me could bend that mighty bow? Or whose right hand could draw the string that scarcely yields to me? <sighs> to you I turn again. Oh, Father, tell, is this my deed? They hesitate. Tis mine. Thine is the grief. Thy stepdames is the crime. The fault of thine this sad mischance is free. Now all thy wrathful bolts from all the hands. O oh, sire, who has forgotten me, thy son? Avenge at least though with a tardy hand thy grandsons. Let the star-set heavens resound and darting lightnings leap from pole to pole. Let me be bound upon the Caspian rocks and let the birds of prey devour my flesh. Why lacks Prometheus Cliff a prisoner? Prepare for me the bare steep mountainside of Caucasus that on his towering peaks the birds and beasts of prey may feed on me. Oh, let the blue simplet ligodies which hedge the Scythian deep stretch out my fettered hands this way and that. And when with rhythmic change the rocks together clash, which fling to heaven the seas between the rushing cliffs, may I lie there the mountain's restless check. Oh, why not heap a mighty pyre of wood and burn my body stained with empire's blood? Thus, thus it must be done. So Hercules shall to the lower world return again. Not yet has madness ceased to vex his heart, but now his wrath has changed and fury signs. Rages against himself. Yet dire abodes of fiends, ye prison house of damned shades, ye regions set apart for guilty throngs, if any place of exile lie beyond deep Erebus, unknown to Cerberus and me, there hide ye me. I'll go and dwell upon the farthest bound of Tartarus. Oh, heart too hard, who worthily will weep for you, my children, scattered through my house. This face, woe hardened, knows not how to weep. Bring me my sword, and give me here my darts, ye my mighty club. For thee, poor murdered boy, I'll break my shaft. For thee, my mighty bow shall be asunder riven, to thy shades my heavy club shall burn, and on thy power, pyre my quiver, full of venomed darts shall lie. My arms shall pay thee my fair penalty for sin. You too, my guilty hands, with these shall burn, too prompt to work us a cruel stepdame's will. Who ever called an act of madness crime. Unbridled madness often ends in crime. Now is there need of Hercules to bear this greatest weight of woe? Not yet is shame so utterly extinguished in my heart 
but I can bear to see all people flee my impious presence. Arms, my Theseus, arms. I pray you give them quickly back to me. If I am sane, trust weapons to my hands. If madness still remains, O oh, father, fly, for I shall quickly find the road to death. My holy ties of birth, by the name that makes us one, if the father, true or foster father, by these hoary locks which pious souls revere, I pray thee spare my lonely age and my enfeebled years. Spare thou thyself to me. The only prop of this, my falling house, the only light that's left to cheer my woeful heart. The fruit of all thy toils have I as yet enjoyed. Whatever either stormy seas I fear, or monsters, every savage king who raves in all the world for impious altars famed is cause of dread to me. My father longs for joy of thee to feel and see thee near. Why should I longer keep my soul in life and linger on the earth? There is no cause, for I have lost my all, my balanced mind, my arms, my reputation, children, wife, the glory of my strength, my madness too. There is no remedy for tainted souls, but death alone can cure me of my sin. And wilt thou slay thy father? Lest I do, I'll kill myself. Before thy father's face. Such impious sights I've taught him to behold. Rather think upon thy worthy deeds and grant thyself remission of one sin. Shall he give absolution to himself, who granted none to other men? My deeds, which have deserved the praise of men, I did because another bade. This is my own. Then help me, father, whether piety or my sad fortune move thee to my aid, or the glory of my manhood now profaned. Give me my arms again, that my right hand may vanquish fate. Thy father's prayers, indeed, are strong enough. But by my pleadings to be moved. Rise up, and meet adversity with thine accustomed force. Thy strength of mind recall, which no misfortune ever yet has daunted. Now must thou with all thy might contend, and curb the wrath of Hercules. If yet I live, I have committed wrong. But if I die, then have I suffered it. I haste to purge the earth of such as I. Now long enough there have there been hovering before mine eyes that monstrous shape of sin. So impious, savage, merciless and wild. Then come, my hand. Attempt this mighty task, far greater than the last. Dost hesitate through cowardice? Or art thou brave alone against boys and trembling mothers? Give my arms, or else shall I from Thracian Pindus strip the woods, the groves of Bacchus, and shall burn Cytherian's ridgy heights along with me the homes of Thebes together with their lords, their temples with their gods will I overthrow, and neath a ruined city will I lie. And if this weight of walls should prove too light for these strong shoulders, and the seven gates be not enough to crush me to the earth, the mighty mass of earth which separates the upper from the nether skies I'll take, and hurl its crushing weight upon my head. Lo, oh, I return thy arms. Are thy words more worthy of the sire of Hercules? See, by this arrow pierced, my child was slain. 
is true, but Juno shot it by thy hand. Then I myself shall use it now. Rubs his heart within his anxious breast. The shaft is ready. Oh, now wilt thou sin of thine own will with full consciousness? Have then thy will. Make no further prayer. For now my grief has gained a safe retreat. Thou only canst preserve my son to me. Thou canst not take him from me. For my fear I've sounded to the depths and feel no more. Thou canst no longer give me any pain. So happy thou canst make me even yet. Decide then as thou wilt decide. But know that here thy cause and reputation stand in doubtful balance. Either thou dost live or thou dost kill thy sire. This fleeting soul, now worn with age and shattered by its grief, is trembling on my lips in act to go. Art thou so slow to grant thy father life? I can no more brook delay, nor wait to thrust the fatal sword into my breast. This shall be a sane Alcides crime. Now stay, my father, stay, and withhold thy hand. Yield thee, my manhood. Do a father's will, add this task also to thy former toils, and live. Lift up my father's fainting form, O Theseus, friend. For these, my guilty hands, that pious duty shun. But I with joy will clasp this hand. With its support I'll walk. And to my aching heart I'll clasp it close and banish all my woes. Where shall I flee? Where hide myself? What land shall bury me from human sight? What Tanais or Nile? What Tigris? With the free waves of Persia mad? What warlike Rhine or Tagus flowing full? And turgid with Iberia's golden sands can ever cleanse this right hand of its stains. Though chill Maitas pour its icy floods upon me, Though the boundless sea should pour its waters o'er my hands, still would they be deep dyed with crime. Where wilt thou take thyself, thou murderer? Wilt flee to east or west? Known everywhere, I have no place of flight. The whole world shrinks from sight of me. The stars avert their courses from me. And the sun saw even Cerberus with milder face. Oh, Theseus, faithful friend, seek out a place far off from here where I may hide myself, since thou a lenient judge of other sins hast ever been. Grant mercy now to me. Restore me to the infernal shades, I beg and load me with the chains thou once didst wear. That place will hide me, but it knows me too. By land awaits thy coming. There will Mars wash cling thy hands and give thee back thy arms, that land. Oh, Hercules now calls to thee, which even gods from sin is wont to free. End of play. Thank you for joining us for Hercules Furens. Uh, big thanks to our friend, your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare. Visit him at his website, shakespeareproofs.com, or on Facebook at Shakespeare Proofs, your friendly neighborhood Shakespeare. We've got links to all his content and more in the comments of this video, including our very good friends at the Renaissance Stream Guide, where you can see all sorts of fun stuff um, every, I think, every day of the week. We would also like to thank all the actors who volunteered to read with us tonight. Thank you also very much for joining us from uh, three different, four different continents tonight, maybe three, three or four, a lot. 
If you enjoyed this reading, all of our past readings are available on our Facebook page and a little bit organized on our website, zenithplayers.com. If you want more information on us, including how to be involved in a reading like this one, you can go to our Facebook page, Zenith Players, and send us a message or send an email to casting at zenithplayers.com and I will get back to you as soon as possible. If you want to continue to express our support to everyone up there working to keep us healthy and safe and vaccinated, we are off next Saturday, but we'll be back on September 18th to continue the Titanic disaster hearings. Thank you.